Welcome back to Building Boat Right. You just saw us take the tops off of our Bronco. It's going to be 85 here today, so summer feels like it's upon us. We thought we'd get some open air. That leads us right into our topic for today. As I told you last week, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive or try something new for Building Boat Right. We're going to do a deep dive on a product. In this case, it's the Built Right Dash Mount and Dash Mount Pro for the new Ford Bronco. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the story of the development, why it's taken us a year and a half, where we ended up, some of the materials involved, the installation, we'll get our Bronco here configured for the summer and uh, go from there. All right, so before we get into the story and the details, I just wanted to make it clear there are two different models of the built right dash mount. There is the standard mount. This is the top plate for a standard dash mount. It's a little bit smaller. You can see kind of the scale. And then in our two door Bronco here installed is the pro model dash mount, which is quite a bit larger. I'd say it's like three times the surface area of this. So just wanted to make that clear because it can kind of be confusing when you see two different styles. That's the reason. Okay, so now that we've got them all kind of on the table here, uh, just that size comparison. Again, this is the standard size. This is the pro model. Um, these are both steel, which is ultimately the material we chose for the top plate. Uh, over here are a couple of the prototypes that we played with. Um, as you can see, different top materials, steel, aluminum, and carbon fiber. This was really just to satisfy my own curiosity. I knew that this was not the right material, but we like to have fun. So the other thing is these are prototype end pieces. We decided really early on we wanted to try and do a multi-piece thing here where the top plate would be one piece and then there would be feet that would be uh, some material that would make it look like really like an OEM part. So this was a really early prototype. This was 3D printed and we set some brass inserts in there. Um, so the top plate and this piece bolt together like that. And then these pieces mount to the dash using a well nut. So if you're not familiar with what a well nut, and that's, what, that's the reason for this recess here. Uh, if you're not familiar with a well nut, what it is is you drill a hole, in this case in the, in the dash um, trim piece, that's the size of this uh, rubber gasket. Perfect. You put this through, and then when you tighten a bolt into it, it cinches up like this against the bottom of that panel or whatever your mounting surface is. That's not going anywhere. And, and actually provides a really sturdy mount so that these feet, once they're installed, are not moving anywhere. Okay, so that is the 3D printed end piece. We used this for prototyping early. Um, the other material we looked at is a billet aluminum end piece. A um, couple of different finishes here. Um, this obviously aesthetically, it's really nice. It feels really nice and solid. So we tried the aluminums for once for a while and they look great. But then when it came time to sort of commercialize the product, the aluminum billet pieces on either side, we're just adding a ton of cost without a ton of real benefit, which is how we landed here on the production parts, which are a uh, glass fiber composite injection molded piece. So you can see it's a very similar design. I mean, aesthetically, it's very, very similar to the aluminum part. It's got brass inserts to connect the two pieces. But as far as like commercialization, this makes the product way more affordable. To, use, to do these out of aluminum was gonna add like $50 or so to the MSRP of the product. Um, and we didn't think that that uh, kept it competitive. So these are still a great part. They're still great looking. They still work very well. And um, this is what enabled us to kind of get this to market with a lot of confidence. So part of the reason we experimented for so long is we knew that there was gonna be other people making these really quickly especially because with Ford having that accessory ready piece on the top and kind of dropping the ball on the accessory rail, we knew that there was gonna be demand for a product like this. Um, but we've been doing these dash mounts long enough. We kind of did the first one on the F-150 um, like six years ago. Um, now we have a bunch of kind of copycats and people that are quickly waiting for us to do this and then making a cheaper version or whatever. Um, so we kind of just decided to be a little bit more patient with this and uh, see what other people did and then, and then release our version, um, giving everybody else the time to release something that is, in my opinion, inferior. So that's the reason for the delay, uh, quite honestly. Okay, so if you've got a Bronco or you're familiar with it, you know that up in the dash, right in the center, there is a plastic piece. You really just kind of see like this angle of it. Um, but there's a quarter 20 threaded part right here and you could mount like a ball mount or something um, here for a cell phone mount. 
Um, but people have issues with this loosening. Uh, ball mounts in general have a tendency to spin if it's, there's just one mounting point. So anyway, we tried for a while to mount our top plate right to this mount. But what that did was it spaced this off of the dash and it didn't really look like really nice and flush. So what we ultimately ended up doing was replacing this part with the mount. So this flange on our top plate replaces this. So it's a really nice clean look. This is an early prototype. This is a production piece. So using the same two mounting features there, we bolt this on. And this provides a very, very sturdy center mounting point for the dash mount. Now what that means is on a standard dash mount, you actually don't need to bolt the two feet to the dash. You can use the included 3M VHB adhesive if you want a little bit extra help, but mounting the standard just with the center post um, provides a really, really robust installation. Now on the pro model, and again, this is a prototype, but I'll demonstrate, this is steel. There's still a little bit of bow there. This is 12 gauge steel. But once you've got this bolted in, um, that goes away. So this is a key part of the solution here. The other thing we were trying to do is under no circumstances did we wanna have you need to disassemble your dash in order to do this installation. So um, the standard is a very, very simple installation. The pro model is a little bit more involved and I'll, I'll show you both of these in the vehicle. Uh, the pro model is a little bit more involved because to do it right, we do really recommend that you drill these two holes in that dash trim piece. Our installation guide, which will be linked in the description, walks you through that step by step. It sounds intimidating, but it's really not. But that is how you're gonna end up with a surface that is this size, but very, very rigid. So let's go take a look in the car. All right, so we're here in our two-door Bronco. As you can see, we have the Dash Mount Pro installed, but with no accessories. So in the spirit of getting ready for summer, I'm gonna pull the top plate off here. We'll get this configured with the attachments that we want and then we'll come and reinstall it because I want to show you just how easy that is. Before I reinstall it though, I'm also going to show you the installation for the dash mount, the standard size, because it's, it's just very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pulled off and we'll take a look. Okay, so like I said, before I get this top plate configured, I'm going to go ahead and install our standard size dash mount. I've got this assembled with these four countersunk screws, just attaching the two mounting feet to the top plate. And I already have our center support bracket here installed because that is the same bracket, whether you have the standard or the pro. Um, I'm also actually even gonna leave the backing on this VHB um, adhesive on the bottom of these feet, partially because I'm not gonna leave this installed, but also because frankly, it's just not very necessary. A um, Little bit of an added uh, warm and fuzzy if you need it, but you'll see that this is very sturdy. So I've got this set into place. I'm gonna install the same hardware that I used on the Pro. They are small threads. I'm gonna get both started here before tightening anything down. All right, so this is now the completed dash mount standard install. If you wanna see the full installation guide, we will link to that in the description of the video. But as you can see, this is, I mean, this is like extremely stable. So um, I'm gonna go ahead now and remove this. We'll get the top plate to our pro mount configured for us and then we'll reinstall it. So one last thing you wanna do before you start bolting things to the top plate is just to get an idea of where you want your accessories. Of course, that's probably better to be done before you remove it, but I didn't do that. Um, but I know I want a cell phone holder and a GoPro. So I'm gonna kinda of configure this ram mount arm and ball socket to kinda of get a sense of where I want it to be sitting. I think I'd like my phone like right here. So if I put the mount something like this, I'm gonna have no trouble getting my phone right into that location where I'm looking for. So about three inches from the end, give or take. Um, and I think I'm gonna shoot for about the same over there with the GoPro. All right, so we've got our top plate, we got our mounts here. Just one thing to note, Good idea to orient this correctly with the bowed piece of it against the windshield and the notch here closer to you as the driver. Uh, I have definitely configured this backwards because it's just not always clear. So that's something to think about here. Uh, the other thing of course is you wanna make sure because both sides can look similar but one side is countersunk for the hardware. So just make sure you're, you're belting your attachments to the top. If you buy a ram mount combo from us, it will come with extra hardware so that you're using nylock nuts on the bottom here, but that's an important thing to do, um, especially if you're using your truck off-road, your Bronco in this case off-road. You don't want this stuff loosening up when you need it to be solid. So that's one. I'm gonna basically mirror this over on the other side with our GoPro mount. Take 
We did okay. All right, so I've got my phone in this mount here so that I can really get a sense of where it sits. That is exactly what I want. And there we go. Nice and sturdy. So phone is installed. We'll throw our GoPro in here. Now this arm is probably a little bit long. Uh, truth is we have a bunch of shorter arms, but we're using them in other trucks right now. So I probably at some point will get this swapped out because the rubber uh, ball and socket situation with Ram actually um it can help with vibration but it, it also can induce a little bit of vibration so uh this is gonna work for now but obviously a shorter arm here would be would be better but uh so this is all i needed to do this is done for the day i'm gonna leave it like this again just with these six bolts it's really easy to reconfigure um so you're not really committing to anything when you get it set up like this and it's kind of fun to see what works for you all right so we've got our dash mount installed reinstalled configured for our use. Uh, I'm pretty excited to put it to the test again. Of course, I mentioned earlier, we've been doing this, we've been experimenting with this for like a year and a half. Uh, it didn't actually take us a year and a half to design this, of course, but part of that is we wanted to be patient and make sure that when we released this, it was the best possible solution available and that it would stay that way for a while. We think that we're there. Of course, you guys will be the ultimate judges on that. The next step that I'm gonna take with this is I want to use potentially a MagSafe type mount for my phone, uh, which of course requires power. So uh, this Bronco doesn't have the USB port up in the dash. So I'm gonna find a way to retrofit that. We'll make a video about it. If it seems like it's something that's pretty easy, which I think it is, I know that it is, um, and the parts are pretty basic, we may even put together a parts kit that would allow you to make that same upgrade to your Bronco or your truck. Um, we have a lot of customers doing that kind of on a DIY basis. Um, so we know that offering a, a kit or a wiring harness would make that really easy for you. So that'll be something coming in a future video. Um, that's all I've got for you today. I would love to hear your feedback on how you like these deep dive type uh, episodes. It's a great way for us to get a little bit out of the day today and dive into our products. We have over 100 products now. We would love to be able to tell this kind of story if it's information that's valuable for you. So we would love to have that feedback, whether it's email, phone call, in the comments. Reach out, we'll get back to you. Uh, that's all I got. Have a good one. We'll see you next Monday.